Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. And happy Pi Day. <laughs> They're ready to, that was always a big deal at Mars High School. And all the math teachers used to get pie. I think they had a deal there or whatever. I don't know. But happy Pi Day. And it's a great day here at St. John's. Beautiful out. A little cold, but we'll take it. Okay, this week, tomorrow, NAMI Virtual Family Support Group will be holding their Zoom at 5.30, and you can log on to their website and register there, I think, by 3.30, and you will, will be able to attend. And I'm hoping that soon, maybe, they'll be back to in person that we haven't heard yet. Tuesday is our 6 p.m., the March Madness Zoom Lent discussion. We had a good discussion last week, so you can join us. Uh, Wednesday is always our music night, bells, praise team and choir. It all begins at 5.30. Uh, jam time at 6.30, Vespers at 7. And next week, correct, is the Lucky to Have Friends lunch. Do you want to say anything more about that? So those of you online that didn't hear everything, kids just need to come and bring a friend. And then you'll be done around one, but the, everybody's going to see that they get home. So they'll have fun. Uh, Tuesday, not this week, but next week, we'll also do the Butler food distribution again from 11 to 1 at uh, Lernerville. And I think I looked ahead. That's where they're going to be for the next three months then, too, also. They seem to have found a good spot there at Lernerville. Um, Easter flower orders are due today, or if you don't have money today or whatever, just fill this out because we can order them. You can always drop the uh, money off later. Um, on the back table are the seven pictures of the seven last words, and you would just need them next week. Yep. Right. Take Pastor. home and don't put me. Color it bring it back. Yeah. And that's all I had. Is there others? Nancy? And that's Blue Kangaroo this week, 10 to 2, someone from the church to help volunteer for that. So if you see Nancy. Is there anything else? Well, then I have two little church signs that kind of go together or whatever. Spring shows what God can do with a drab and dirty world. I thought that was good. And spring is God's way of saying, I'm tired of winter too. <laughs> Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
peace of God be with you. And also with you. I invite those of you who would like to share your sign of God's peace. <clears throat> now for those who are able, if you'd like to stand and join with us, and this is a new song, uh, Broken Vessels, and it goes with our theme. Nobody is hungry, nobody thirsty. The day of God's love flowing freely. The day of Christ's love and healing of those who reach out to touch him. Let us worship our God and let love flow. You may be seated. I'm going to invite Carter and Braden to come on up, and we're going to see what we find in our sand today. You never know what might be hidden in, in the sand along the beach or here at St. John's. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. Go ahead and reach in, Brady. We can both reach in together. See what you can find. Oh, you found some sea glass and a shell. Okay, what else did you find? I'm looking for something in particular today. 
Keep looking. Don't stop. I'll tell you when we got everything. That's a lot. Oh, okay. Hang on to the, we're going to hang on to this piece. And we're going to hang on to this piece. And there we go. It's a picture. What is it? It's a cross. It's, it's missing some pieces. So we'll put this one here. And we'll put this one here. I think we're missing one more. Can you find another one piece, a little square? No. Maybe it's really lost. That's okay, we'll get it all put back later. Maybe it's really lost, never to be found again. <coughs> Maybe we'll just have to get another piece and put in there. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, um, and this week we have a story of a man and his daughter needed to be healed. And he came to Jesus. And then there was a woman and she was reaching out. And maybe just like this, you're reaching and trying to find this piece and I don't know what happened to it. I, I, oh, there it is. There it is. It's like this woman who waited 12 years. She was sick and she needed healing. And just like it took a long time for us to find this last square. So finally, she saw Jesus and she reached out and she just touched his clothes. And she knew if she just touched him, she would be healed. Just, and, and that kind of completed the picture of her life, that now she was healed. And sometimes we find ourselves things missing in our lives. Sometimes it's a thing, and sometimes maybe it's something else. Maybe it's some, some words of forgiveness or some love. You found another shoe. Yeah. So we reach out to Jesus to help us to complete our picture of our lives. And they're ever-changing. So next week, this cross could be different colors or different pieces or something else. Yeah. Yeah. So this week we want to remember that there are different pictures of our lives and we reach out to Jesus to help to make the most beautiful picture ever. Um, so I'm going to have you pray with me, if you'll repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for being with me. Help me to paint the picture of me that you want me to be. Amen. Oh, those shells came from all over. Now, hold on. I'm going to give you guys both a bag. And if you have time, I know Mr. Kurt's going to help you with things. Oh, let me give you the biggest ones. You can make whatever picture you want with the pieces you have. And it doesn't have to be a cross. I made that one because it was easy. I'll put my picture back here in the sand. Well, those who are able, please stand and join me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have stored, stored up the blessings, blessings meant for all, and kept them. We have pretended that we have done enough for others when we still see their needs. At times, we obstruct your love from flowing to all. We ask your forgiveness. Amen. Believe this good news. Nothing can damn the waters of God's love. God's mercy frees us to make our broken places whole. Love flows to us this day. We are forgiven. Amen. You may be seated. God, we come this day having sprung ahead. And for some of us, it seems normal. And some feels just a little bit off today. 
it's amazing, God, how you have everything in order, and then an hour we seem to lose, and yet it can throw us off for the entire week, just a little bit. Kind of reminds us of each day that we get up. We don't know what we're going to face, and oftentimes it's great joys and laughter, and we are excited, and things are going well. And then other days, it seems like every little thing seems to just be a little bit off, or this something happens, and then another thing happens, and the next thing you know, it's a snowball, and the storms come. We are thankful that Jesus walks with us each step of our journey to help us, especially in those <laughs> difficult times. But God, we are just glad that you are with us all the time. That we can pray out loud to you and we can think of you in our thoughts. That you know us intimately. We pray on this Lenten journey that we keep our minds and, and hearts open so that we can draw closer to you in our relationship and to grow in our faith. As we look around the world, we see so many things that can cause us to be upset. We see a lot of dissension and, and, and still tension or perhaps some anger. We see, continue to see violence and we see st storm devastation and so many things. And yet, God, it's good to know that you continue to hold us tightly through all things. But we do lift up our communities, our, our government, our country and our world as we continue to struggle with so many things, with racism, with the hatred, with the coronavirus and how we should be keeping ourselves safe and differing opinions. The times in which we are scared and uncertain. We pray for all of those with mental health conditions, for the times when, when we are unsure. And yet your love is forever with us, forever flowing, we are thankful for the agencies like One Great Hour Sharing that can reach out and in the midst of troubles, let your love flow and to be able to, to make things better and to help people out, to bring health and, holy and, and wholeness in people's lives, to put back the broken pieces. <clears throat> Jesus, we are so thankful and we pray now for all of those who need healing that we have lifted up today, for those that we have not mentioned, but we still lift them up to you, God, for you know who they are. Bring them the healing that they need and the strength and courage that they have shown so far. Help them to continue. We pray for all of each one in our congregation, for you know our needs, and for our church that you, you continue to lead us and guide us to be the church you call us to be. For all of your blessings, we give you thanks. And we pray now as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
So as we look at holy vessels, we see brightly colored pottery and brightly colored um, vessels of all sorts and shapes and sizes. And then we see the, the old chipped and cracked and perhaps faded out pottery. The same is true of pictures. I mean, how many of us have pictures at home that are kind of faded out from age um, or maybe even yellowed? Dr. Marsha McPhee from the Worship Design Studio shares that sometimes we see the pictures of our lives as dulled and our hope for a brighter future can fade. She goes on to say that it's like we need a touch of inspiration and we need to seek out our divine healer. Today our scripture shows us different pictures of those seeking out our divine healer, Jesus Christ. And the first, our story today um, comes from Matthew 9 and I'm going to begin with verse 18. While Jesus was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him, saying, and he said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him, and she touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. So what is the picture you see here? Well, I'm going to start at the beginning. And the very first thing I read from the scripture was, while Jesus was saying this, while Jesus was saying this. Well, I looked at, at, at um, the scripture and I looked ahead a little bit in it, the verses before, and found out that Jesus um, <clears throat> was talking um, to some followers of John the Baptist. They had come up to him and asked him some questions and he was giving them some answers. And then while he was saying this, this synagogue leader comes and kneels at him. It sounds like it's a nice word of saying Jesus was interrupted. I mean, how many of you have been talking to someone or doing something and somebody has come up and interrupted you? Or maybe you found yourself in need of interrupting someone else. I'm sure for a good reason. After all, the synagogue leader had a good reason too. His daughter had just died. But I remember um, growing up hearing those words like, can't you see I'm talking? Don't interrupt me. You need to wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, the synagogue leader needed to wait. And he knew that, but he also knew that his, his daughter has died. So I wonder what that picture looks like with those followers of, of John the Baptist. Were they upset when this man came and interrupted their, when Jesus was talking to them? You know, did they have these you know, mad looks on their faces? Um, were they, um, you know, I was kind of thinking like, geez, we finally get to talk to Jesus and now somebody comes and interrupts us. I wonder then if they, you know, did the eye rolling thing and shook their head, you know, that whole. We don't know what the picture really looked like. We just get the picture of the man coming to Jesus and pleading about his daughter. And then there's the picture of the second interruption. We don't just have one interruption. We have two interruptions. Somebody touched Jesus' coat. Now, I'm sure there were other people around. And so what would it matter? And yet Jesus stops. He stops. He turns. He looks at the woman. What did the picture of the synagogue leader now look like? Before he was the one who were interrupted, now he's the one that his mission is getting interrupted. Did he have that pleading look at Jesus like, please don't stop now. My, my daughter, please. Or 
maybe he had that man look, mad look like, come on, Jesus, let's go. We're on the way to my house, let's go. Or did he have a look of compassion on his face? Was it a picture of this compassionate guy looking down at the woman as Jesus brought her healing? We don't know. But we do know the woman didn't mean to interrupt. She just gently touched Jesus, that's all. And that's all she needed. That would be enough. She knew her faith had told her that Jesus was a healer, and even if she just touched him, she would be healed. She had been considered unclean for 12 years because she had an issue with bleeding. That made her unclean. So people didn't want to see her. They didn't want her around. So she was used to sneaking around, being invisible in crowds. But in this picture, Jesus not only sees her, but he speaks to her. He stops, he turns around, and he says, with his words of power and of love, of acceptance and healing, daughter, your faith has healed you. Vessels, pictures, even people, you and I, can become dulled and bitter and hopeless after years of the weather and situations beating us down. Yet this woman was able to keep her faith through 12 years of suffering. She may have been a bit dulled by all of the people around who looked down at her, but the light of her faith shone brightly for all who were willing to see. She reached out and touched the divine <coughs> healer. Dr. McAfee reminds us there are times that we too need to reach out and touch our divine healer. The woman was healed and restored to a community that distanced itself from her because of her illness. Have there been times in your life when you have needed to be restored in body, mind, or soul? When we experience healing and renewal, we are better able to see solutions to see different pictures of, of our lives. We're gonna continue now with the story to look at one more picture. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and the people playing pipes, he said, go away, for this girl is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in he took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread through all that region. Well, isn't that a picture? I mean, you have this noisy house. Jesus is going to a room of a child who has died. You have this house of people playing these flutes, these pipes, funeral music. <coughs> and so Jesus tells them that they need to go away, and they just laugh at them if you can imagine, laughing at Jesus. I mean, after all, they knew the girl was dead. Didn't Jesus hear the pipes playing? It was funeral music. So they finally, I wonder what it really took to get the crowd outside, but they finally got outside, and Jesus then went into the girl's room, and he took her hand, and she got up. She got up and was alive. So I wonder then if all the musicians came back in the house to play some celebration music, some hallelujahs and amens. The picture changed. It's different. It changes from funeral to a joyful party. The story reminds us that the pictures of our lives do change. Jesus took the brokenness and the pain and the loss of the woman and the re religious leader and he made things better. Think about your life and how the picture of your life has changed over the years. I mean, no matter what age we are, even we know a baby's life picture changes every month. I think ours continue to change if we really look at it. But our pictures change year to year. We think about the church, you know, the, what does the church really look like? I mean, Stella had, we received some pictures from Stella of the church when it was in the process of being all turned around. But I don't mean the physical building, but 
How has the church changed? Do we see just the physical building or do we see the missions and the people and people's faith growing and living out our faith in our lives? What are the pictures that we see in our communities, our nation around the world? We certainly have been seeing pictures of people in the hospital with COVID. How might this picture look different? We're now getting vaccines and yet you know, we know we should keep wearing masks to keep people safe, and yet we don't know what's going to happen. It might be, um, as we look at pictures around our world, we might see the picture of Jesus letting love flow. That's our one great hour of sharing um, theme this year, and how we begin to see um, different pictures as we see love flowing through the many missions of one great hour of sharing. This year, the UCC gave um, $5,000 to partners in East Asia so that they could learn to better cope, um, we go, better cope with um, COVID-19 pandemic. The Christian Commission for Development in Bangladesh supported about 150 vulnerable families with emergency food protection and wash materials and homestead gardening support. We've seen the pictures of the storm damage in Texas when they experienced the, the big freeze. And the winter weather there left um, dozens dead. It paralyzed cities. They lost electric. Um, they had a lot of water damage. On March 3rd, just two weeks ago, um, Connie Larkman of the United Church of Christ shared that the UCC retirement housing um, foundation is helping to paint a different picture for repairs of um, in Texas through pledging to match donations of one great hour of sharing that go to that area for disaster relief. Love will flow as Jesus' love flowed through the communities of the people that came to him for healing. Han and her mom live in a poor community in rural um, Vietnam. Now, I know, can you a picture in this year, 2021, of people having no idea really what a toilet is? Of their idea of going to the bathroom is going out to the bushes? Well, that's what it was like for Han and her mom. And because of one great hour of sharing, letting love flow, we now see a different picture. September 2018, <clears throat> That's not that long ago. Um, a latrine and water supply improvements were brought to Han's school and community. So now the picture is one of modern latrines, clean water taps, better hygiene, and health. We have seen cars coming from all over to get food during this last year. As, and we have helped with one of those food distributions in Butler, and people come from all over the county. We've seen people drive all over to get a vaccine. How far, though, would you drive, or should I say, how far would you be willing to walk to get clean water every day? Well, um, Namanu uh, Macharia and her children were walking 12 miles, 12 miles, heat beating down on them just to retrieve water, and I'm not even going to say it's clean water, just water. Then they would carry the five-gallon containers back to their village. One great hour of sharing monies now paint a different picture. Not only is love flowing, but clean water is flowing. Now, um, because they have a solar-powered borehole wells and water system. Now, Namanu walks to a kiosk that is a third of a mile away. One third of a mile. And she is so excited because also the water is clean. Her children are now able to go to school. So it's a beautiful picture of flowing water. We are called to be people of restoration, releasing love into the world, which empowers others around to live healthier, safer, more hope-filled lives.
You know, everywhere that Jesus went, he saw pictures. And as he interacted with people, our divine healer repainted those pictures. And people were renewed. Their lives were changed. Jesus takes the pieces of broken glass, like the one of the woman who touched his coat, and of the um, religious leader who came and, and asked for his, his child to be brought back to life. He takes those pieces of broken glass. He takes the pieces of our broken glass, our broken lives, and he puts them together into and creates a picture of healing. Jesus takes the picture, pieces and pictures of our lives and lets his healing love flow over them, renewing us and creating a different picture. Jesus creates beautiful mosaics of pictures of our lives. And sometimes they are pictures that we don't even yet envision. When we find ourselves in need of healing love and a touch of inspiration, it's okay to interrupt Jesus. Just want you to know. It's okay to interrupt Jesus and ask him to walk with us. And it's okay for us to reach out to touch our divine healer. To listen for Jesus' words that say, Take heart, my daughter. Take heart, my son. Your faith has healed you. Your faith will give you strength. Grab hold as Jesus holds out his hand. For we come as pieces of sea glasses, which Jesus takes and puts in to together into a holy mosaic of healing and flowing love. Amen. Offerings. 
Thank you to those who remembered to bring in your box. I forgot mine. I'll bring it in another time. We just let you know that you can continue to bring in your boxes. And if you want to take a couple more weeks and put a little more change, that's fine too. We'll continue to collect them for the next couple of weeks. Let us stand now and give thanks. Let us pray. Holy Only God, God giver, giver of all good gifts, we ask your blessings on these offerings that the great hours of labor have made possible. Bless the drops that become mighty rivers of grace and transformation. Bless the vision of a world transformed by your flowing love. Amen. Jesus Christ who reaches out to us daily and for the Holy Spirit who continues his presence with us now and always. Amen. <laughs> ¶¶ 